YouTube. Welcome to Geek Shh. So as we proceed on our journey of pairing the M4 Mac Mini with the perfect companion in the form of a hub or docking station, we have a 80 gigabit per second enclosure from the company B-Link that might just be the perfect match. Now, full disclosure, this unit was not sent to me from B-Link for review. I purchased it with my own money rather than going back and forth in emails. Now, whether a product is sent to me or I pay for it myself does not change my opinion on anything I review, believe it or not. Now, the only thing that does change is when a company sends me a unit, I try not to talk about its competitors' products in the same video because I feel like it's unfair to the company that sent me the unit. But since I paid for this product on my own, guess what we're going to do? We're going to compare it to the Acasis 80 gigabit per second enclosure later on in the video. So in the box, we have a bare bones situation consisting of just a manual, the unit itself, and two USB-C connectors. Now, the reason it's two USB-C connectors is because one is for when you use the unit on top of your M4 Mac Mini, and the other is for when you use the unit on the bottom of your M4 Mac Mini. So back to the unit itself, it has the same form factor as the M4 Mac Mini, so it's coming in at a little over five inches in both length as well as height, and then a little over half an inch in width and about 265 grams in weight, which equates to 0.58 pounds. Now let's talk about the ports. We have a USB-A 3.0 port. Then we have a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port. Then we have another USB-A 3.0 port. Then we have an audio jack and then a USB-C port to connect to your M4 Mac mini. And then we also have a power input port. Now utilizing the power input is unnecessary because the max I saw it get to is 10.8 watts, which is under the 15 watt limit provided by each Thunderbolt port of the M4 Mac mini. But it's nice to see in case you want to offload the wattage for whatever reason. And last but not least, we have a SD card reader on the side. All right, so to open up the unit, first you have to pull the two tabs, unscrew the four screws, then unscrew another four screws. Now, remember, this is the Mate Mini B, which means it has one 80 gigabit per second NVMe slot. Now, I decided to populate that slot with one SN850X NVMe drive. Now, all we got to do is remove the tape from the thermal pad and close everything back up. Now, before we go to the desktop and run some speed tests, a quick word from today's sponsor. So today's video is sponsored by a tool to keep your Mac running at its best. Clean my Mac. Now, let's be honest, not everything on your Mac deserves internal storage. So one of everyone's favorite features has to be the easy junk removal tool that can free up your precious gigabytes in just a matter of seconds. Not only that, how could anyone ever forget Spacelens? Clean my Mac's revolutionary way to visualize where all your storage is allocated. Also, you can round out your system protection with the Moonlight anti-malware engine to easily sweep your system for any malicious programs. And if that wasn't enough, now for the first time, Clean My Mac can easily connect to iCloud, Google Drive, and OneDrive. Just sign in with your OneDrive or Google Drive apps to easily connect to Clean My Mac and manage all your files at once. So let me ask you a question. How can you possibly still be waiting? Start cleaning up your Mac today. Try Clean My Mac for seven days free and use the code GEEKSH10 for a 10% discount. Once again, that's GEEKSH10 for a 10% discount. And last but not least, I have to genuinely thank Clean My Mac for sponsoring today's video because it allows me to continue to bring you guys such great content. And now let's get back to the video. All right, so first thing first, I just wanna go ahead and show you how the B-Link uh, appears in the system report. It shows up as SB, USB 4 V2, and that gives you 80 gigabits per second. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. Now let's go ahead and do a quick speed test on the B-Link. All right, let's go ahead and do a one gig speed test. All right, and that's pretty low at first, but it should definitely increase like the read is. All right, so it's rated for 80 gigabits per second. So that's, it's technically it's supposed to go all the way up to 8,000 megabytes per second, but you're really gonna, your majority of the time, you're gonna be between the 5,000 and 6,000 range. All right, and you can see 5,600 on the right and 5,800 megabytes per second on the read. So we're definitely in the range. 
Now, I also wanted to go ahead and test the network port for you. And remember, it's a 2.5 GBE network port, and I do have a 2.5 network in my home. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to uh, my Ugreen NAS. Hold on, I don't know why I pressed that by mistake. All right, so let's go ahead to my Ugreen NAS, connect over. And if we have on 2.5, that means we should be around 250 megabytes per second on those mechanical hard drives or any drive at, for that matter over the network. All right, so we're within range when it comes to that as well. All right, guys, so we're gonna do a quick stress test on the B-Link, on the NVMe drive inside the B-Link. So right here, I have a folder 648, 49 gigs. I'm gonna send it over from the B-Link over to the desktop, and then I'm gonna send it back from the desktop over to the B-Link. And we're gonna pay attention to the temperature that it rises to. And I'm also gonna refresh the temperature like every 20 seconds. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna put the heat gun on it as well. Starting out, it's about 38 degrees Celsius. The ambient temperature in the room right now, in this particular room is, hold on, let me check it real quick. It's like 26 degrees Celsius. Hopefully you can see that. So it's 26 degrees Celsius in the room and it's about 38 degrees for that particular unit on the B-Link. Let me refresh this. So I'm gonna send it over to the desktop, then from the desktop back over, and I'm gonna check the, the temperature along the way. All right, so that kept it under 65 degrees Celsius. So now what we're gonna now what we're gonna do is send it back over from the internal hard drive back over to the B-Link. And this one it really normally gets hot. So we're gonna still pay attention to the temperatures. All right, so it kept it at 76 degrees max. As far as how hot the actual unit got, we see that it reached the temperature of around 41 degrees, 41, 42 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm. So now what I'm gonna do is reset this and see exactly how long it takes for the temperature, the temperature of the NVMe to drop down to let's say like 50 degrees Celsius. So. In about four minutes, I'm going to refresh the temperature. I don't want to do it right now because refreshing the temperature adds a little stress to the NVMe drive. So in about four minutes, I'm going to go ahead and check it and we're going to see how long it takes to get down to 50 degrees Celsius. All right, so it took about five to six minutes for it to get back down to 50 degrees Celsius, which is a good temperature where it cooled down. As far as the unit itself, as you can see, it's still around 41 degrees Celsius, and it's still very warm to the touch, but overall it did a, you see what it did 
in terms of keeping the temperatures in check. Now let's do the same thing to the acasis. All right, guys, so I got the fan on constantly on the acasis, and we're now gonna do the same thing with that one as well. So we're gonna send the same folder, 649 gigs over, and then send it back. Let's go ahead and start that right now. Go ahead and start it. All right. All right, so as you can see, it kept it under 46 degrees and 33 degrees Celsius was the temperature on the actual unit itself. Now let's send it back over. All right, so the cases was able to keep it at 60 degrees Celsius. And now we're gonna see how long it takes for it to get back down to a temperature of about 50 degrees Celsius. Let me go ahead and get that started. So I think I'm gonna check in on it at around uh, three minutes for this particular one. Right now, the case is at, is at like 39 degrees Celsius, the actual unit. And we're gonna see how long it takes for it to get the drive back down to like 50 degrees Celsius. So in about three or four minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and check it. I don't wanna refresh it right now because refreshing it adds a little bit of stress to the drive. So I'm gonna wait a few minutes before I do that. All right, so in about five minutes, it was five minutes or a little lower, a little under, it was able to get the drive back down to 50 degrees Celsius. All right, so let's do some quick Wi-Fi tests. First and foremost, I gotta let you know, I get one gig up, one gig down for my internet service provider. Now, the first test I did was an ethernet test. Now the ethernet, doesn't matter if the B-Link is on top or bottom, you're still gonna get the same results. The second test I did was a Wi-Fi test. This one was without the B-Link on top or bottom, nowhere around it, just the M4 Mac Mini by itself. And here goes the results. Now the third test I did was with the B-Link on top of the M4 Mac Mini, and here go the results. Now the fourth test, which is the one everyone wants to see, this one was done with the B-Link on the bottom of the M4 Mac Mini. As you can see, I didn't run into any Wi-Fi issues whatsoever. Now, full disclosure, I gotta let you know something. I recently upgraded my downstairs Wi-Fi router. I went from the Air Apple Airport Extreme, which is a very old router, but still gets the job done. And I upgraded to a TP-Link BE9300. Now, the difference between the two is the Apple router is a 802.11 AC, whereas the TP-Link is a 802.11 AX. So it plays better with the M4 Mac Mini. Now, all Wi-Fi tests was done on the five gigahertz band. Let me just show y'all the information on the screen so y'all can see exactly what was going on when I was doing the Wi-Fi test. So as you can see, I'm not running into any Wi-Fi issues at all with this B-Link, but if I still was on the Apple Airport Extreme, maybe I would have, I don't know. I don't have time to test. Let's get to the next part. So after using the B-Link Mate Mini after a week, here's what I think. In terms of functionality, they're providing you with two USB 3.0 ports, a 2.5 gigabit per second network port, 
which gives you a head start on upgrading your network if you ever plan to do it. Also, they're giving you an audio port, a SD card reader, as well as the option of offloading the wattage to a power brick. They're also giving you the option of using this unit on top or on the bottom of your M4 Mac Mini with zero Wi-Fi issues involved. Not only that, they're also giving you a very quiet experience. Even with the bottom cover off and me putting my ear to it, I still couldn't hear the fan. Speaking of fans, it was able to keep the drive under 80 degrees Celsius during the stress test, 76 to be exact. Not as good as the cases, but still very good nonetheless. Now, at the end of the day, there is some negatives. No screwdriver included. The drive installation process is tedious and probably could have been designed better. Also, the SD card position on the side is terrible and renders the slot unusable for me personally due to me mounting my M4 Mac Mini under my desk and my mount denying me access. And last but not least, mounting the B-Link under your M4 Mac Mini blocks the power button completely. But those negatives are completely overpowered and dismissed because of the price. This unit is $169.99 regular price and $139.99 on sale. Let me put that in perspective for you. The cases we tested earlier will cost you at least $209 and that's without USB ports and also an SD card reader. So what B-Link is doing right now is shaking up the 80 gigabit per second market by offering you more for less, way less. So any issues you may have with this unit is null and void because this is as good as someone that's on a budget is going to get point blank period. So like I always say, we cannot say which is the best hub overall because some are 10 gigabits per second, some are 40 gigabits per second, and some are 80 gigabits per second, which basically means they're meant for the M4 Mac Mini Pros. So for that specific category only, I'm going to go ahead and crown this B-Link Mate Mini B King. Hands down, 10 out of 10. It's not only the best hub or docking station for 80 gigabits per second, but also the best enclosure period for 80 gigabits per second. It is what it is. Great job by B-Link. All right, so my next video will be on the Ugreen NAS, the 4800 plus to be exact. Look out for that coming to you sometime next week. So again, I wanna go ahead and thank Clean My Mac for sponsoring this video. My name is DeMarco Payne for Geeksh. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And last but not least, may the good news be yours.